everybody. I wanted to welcome you to Heart and Home. I have a few moments um, as my children are playing and having their lunch break um, playtime to share with you a book that I recently got finished reading. Now it's a big book and it took me a long time to actually start it and finish it. Now I started it probably back in 2019 and now it's, um, I finished it like January 2021. Now I wasn't reading it that whole time. I started it and then I like months and months and months passed and then I would read a little bit and then months would pass and then finally um, the start of this past school year in like August 2020 I decided I'm going to finish this book and so I started reading about a chapter oh yes thank you started reading like a chapter trying to read like a chapter every week or every two weeks or something just a little bit every day and finally got through it so the book that I want to share today is called the pleasures of God by John Piper meditations on God's delight in being God and it's a really wonderful book it's daunting because it is a lot of pages <laughs> but it's easy to understand easy to read um, once you get past how big it looks on the outside and the message in it is so powerful and so transforming so I was so glad to read it and it will be one of the ones that I save um, to reread um, in a few years. I like to reread books and be reminded of the things that I have been learning. I will be right back. <laughs> back again. Um, so I wanted to share a few of my favorite quotes from this book. <laughs> I'm doing a book review <laughs> while you guys are playing. Um, and the first one is in the introduction, actually. In the, and the um, John Piper writes, Since God loves the infinite value of his glory above all things, since he loves being God above all things, Therefore, he is the most excellent being that exists. To be given the privilege and the power to know and admire and make much of this person with ever-increasing joy for endless ages is to know what it means to be loved. This is the meaning of God-centered grace. And when I read that, I thought that was such a powerful... Um, quote from this book just to realize really what it means when we say that God loves us because I think in my own mind I have this fuzzy kind of I don't know this idea of what love means really probably is just me feeling good but really God loving me means that he has made a way that I can know him because to know him is the greatest thing and the my my greatest good because God is the most um, excellent and as as Piper said excellent being that exists so this is what it means when God loves us that's like when John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life God was showing us his love by giving his son to make the way so that we could know him. So that was just a really eye-opening for me when I read that. Now I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to another part that I really enjoyed. And this is the gospel. The gospel of the glory of the happy God. It is good news that God is gloriously happy. No one would want to spend eternity with an unhappy God. If God is unhappy, then the goal of the gospel is not a happy goal. And that means it would be no gospel at all. 
But in fact, Jesus invites us to spend eternity with a happy God. When he says, enter into the joy of your master, Jesus lived and died that his joy, God's joy, might be in us and our joy might be full. Therefore, the gospel is the gospel of the glory of the happy God. And it was just so amazing to think, because I think so often I forget about the fact that God is happy. He is happy in saving sinners. It was his idea to, Mama, to save us. To open it. Sure, let me open it. A Tootsie Roll here. Ah! A Tootsie Roll? Here we go. What did you say? Okay, go eat your Tootsie Roll. Are you playing store? <laughs> um, where were we? So God is happy to save us. I so often get stuck in the, the rut in my mind thinking that I have to perform and that I have to impress God and that he won't be happy with me unless I do something really, you know, awesome or, you know, amazing or read a bunch of books or um, memorize a bunch of verses. But Jesus is the one who is my righteousness, not what I do. My righteousness is as filthy rags. And so to remember that God is happy and that the gospel is happy, good news that God has made a way for us to know him to know his love and to spend eternity with him and that he is excited uh, about that. And so that makes me excited because to think of spending eternity with God and that he is happy and so excited, that, that just really is amazing to meditate on. That God is happy and that we get to spend, for everybody who loves Jesus and who trusts in Jesus, they get to spend eternity after we die with him forever and ever and ever with this happy God of ours. So that was another place. And then um, last, lastly, I love this place talking about God's pleasure and delight in us praying to him. God is the kind of God who delights most deeply, not in making demands, but in meeting needs. Prayer is his delight because prayer shows the reaches of our poverty and the riches of his grace. Mama, you know that bag? You know, did you see that bag at post we put the sucker Oh, it's still in the car. We'll have to get it later. Prayer is that wonderful transaction where the wealth of God's glory is magnified and the wants of our soul are satisfied. Therefore, God delights in the prayers of the upright. And this is really good news because most of the time, all the time, I am in desperate need of God's help. And what? it is just wonderful speaking? to know Quiet, let mommy finish. Uh, it's wonderful to know that God is happy for me to come to him with all my needs, with all of my problems, with all of my struggles, and that that gives him joy and delight because then he can pour into me his grace and his mercy and help me. And so he is wanting me to come to him um, with all these weights and um, things that that just are hard to bear, you know, whether it's discouragements or, you know, just the, the everyday grind of life or even the big, ah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Can I do um, it again? No, I think one time's enough. Or whether it's just <laughs> the challenges of life. Even just the joys of life, but just coming to him. Because even like when we're having wonderful times, we don't have enough strength to enjoy them like we want to. And that can be frustrating. And so God 
arms are open wide for us to run to him. And it's his delight when we do this, we run to him for his help and mercy and grace. And then he can pour upon us his unlimited riches that are ours in Christ Jesus. So this is a great book. It, there is so much more in it. And it would take me like several times reading it over and over to get all the, the sweet riches from it. Uh -huh, just pointing yeah. me to Jesus. So if you guys are interested in getting this book, I'll put the link of it to Amazon in the description box below. But it is a great book to check out and to read and to um, have a long-term goal of reading it because it's really big. But if you read just a little bit every day, you are sure to get to the end of it and um, it will be well worth the work you put into it. So anyway, that is the book review I wanted to share today, The Pleasures of God by John Piper. Thank you for listening, and um, it was so good to have you here at Heart and Home. Enjoy your day.